So how do I explain <laughs> the last couple days? I just dropped my cable needle in my oatmeal. I'm not happy. <laughs> I got a message on Instagram today that I think may completely change the way I do the rest of this show. Today is Wednesday, September 14th. So we're still just under a month away. Actually, I guess we're about like three-ish weeks away from starting the mystery knit along. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday, so yeah, three weeks from tomorrow. And my yarn has arrived. It actually got here about five days ago. I just haven't sat down to open it up yet. I wanted to open it up on camera, even though I already know what colors I purchased. I wanted to like open them up with you and like have that reaction together. So let's go ahead and get into it. It comes in this box that says MCAL 2022. So and now I gotta figure out <laughs> how to open this thing. I've got some scissors right here. So let me give that a go. Close your scissors before you put your arm on them. That would help. Okay, so this is fun. It says you can share your unboxing. That's really cute with uh, Wes Nitzer, Steven, and Penelope. Um, those are the hashtags for this year. So I'm gonna make sure I use those in all my posts. So let's just, let's open it up together, ready? Oh my gosh. So I am excited this year. This is the first time I've ever purchased a kit for the West Knits MCAL and my first time purchasing a kit like from the people putting it on. So I just think this is so fun. So it's totally different than what I've done in the past. I've done lots of um, like going to different places to get yarn. So it feels almost like I'm cheating in a way. Like this was so easy. I just had to make sure I was like <laughs> signed in when the shop updated. But other than that, I just feel like I got you know, the easy way out here. So I'm trying to just like enjoy um, the moment. So let's see what is here in this. Don't show you all the other information, but it looks like I have a little letter here that says, welcome to the 2022 MCAL. We hope you're as excited as we are, whether it's your first time or your 10th. I think it's my sixth. <laughs> um, we want to make sure you have all the information you need to enjoy this amazing knit along. Keep on reading for the details, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I think that these details were already on the website, so I know all of this already, and I am just ready to get into my yarn. So the first thing that comes in this kit is this cute little bag. I saw so many people say they wanted to get the kit just because of this adorable little bag. It says, you're a knitter baby, and it has MCAL 2022 on it. It is a really cute bag, though I don't think it's actually intended for use with this make along because it's not a huge bag and this is a five skein shawl so yeah i don't think it's actually like intended for use for this but definitely can use it for some other things it's got a one-sided drawstring oh that's a little tough to do looks like that slides down to keep it into place which is good i'm sure that will get easier to do and it has the oh it only has one handle sorry one handle here which could be good to like hook onto something or sometimes I like knit at bars and they have like the little hooks under the bar that would be nice um it also has like a little tag here um which I think is the brand but yeah that's pretty cool I think that's really really cute not super practical for the actual kit but that doesn't really matter I was planning to use my big float tote anyway so that's fine <gasps> oh and here is my yarn Cutting back in here really quickly, before I show the yarn, I realized that there's some things inside this bag that I forgot to show you. So if you got this bag and you didn't take a look inside of the little pouches in here, actually that's good to show too. There's like three little open pockets in there. There are a few more things that come with the MCAL. One of these very fun stickers. 
I never know what to do with stickers. What do y'all do with stickers? I just like hold on to them and then sometimes I use them in giveaways because I don't know what to do with them. There is a tag, which is very fun. I'm not 100% sure that I would put this onto a shawl, but you know what? I have it, so I may just do that this year. I think that could be cute. I love how these look like on hats or like on the bottom of sweaters. I, I don't know. Maybe I will sew it onto the shawl. And then there's this Stephen and Penelope needle gauge which is pretty neat i've never seen one like this before it looks like you slide the needle in and when it stops um i'm assuming that's the size of the needle so that's pretty cool i will have to try that out okay now moving on to the yarn oh it's so pretty okay so this kit was called pink blush i think <laughs> Oh no, I just, wait a second. <laughs> wow, Natalie, you're really good at making videos and knowing everything that is going on before you start filming. Yes, pink blush. Okay, my memory served me well. This kit is called Pink Blush. I'm gonna go ahead and open things up because these guys don't need to be in here. Wee, they can breathe. Okay, so I really wanted to use a single ply yarn this year. I think it was just from watching all of the different videos that Stephen West was putting out and seeing just how soft the the single ply, like how soft the shawls look. I just, that's what I wanted for this year. I want soft, I want comfort, I want to love it, and I love pink, and so I just embrace that. So I am using yarn from Walk. They have a really cool logo. You can see, excuse me, you can see like the the gold um, in the label there. That's really, really cool. So I have um, my, my main color. I don't know which one's going to be the main, but I have a very bright pink and then a very light, like neutrally color. I guess you could say it's a little bit pink. It's very soft. Um, it definitely like picks up pink, like on its own. It looks a little more, at least in person, a little bit tan, but together it definitely has that pink. So this is the Cottage Merino, which is 100% superwash merino and this color here is called pink candy and i love it <laughs> this one looks like it's called powder so i've got two of each of these um for the shawl and then my accent color i'm not so sold on i mean i'm gonna use it i think but I didn't love this part of the kit. So this is the accent color. It's like this rusty, um, like tan kind of color. It's called blush, but I have to say it's my least favorite of the kit. Um, but I really liked these other two colors. So I think they look beautiful, but I know that once we get into the knitting, if I do want to change something, it will be very easy to find another single ply um, merino yarn. I really want I'm kind of right now that I have them in person thinking that like neon yellow would be super fun. Um, I have done neon yellow in the past. Actually, hold on. You may be thinking, Natalie, you're not a neon yellow person, but have you seen this? This was um, West Knit's shawl from 20, like 18 maybe. Pink, neon yellow. They go together so well. But anyway, I don't want to go for too long on this because I want to share with you all that's happening each week in the MCAL. So here's a final look at those beautiful colors and I'll see you in just a few weeks. The MCAL starts in just two days and somehow I am not prepared at all. I don't know how this happened because it felt like I had so much time, I got my yarn so early. But I do have a yarn update for you. So, you saw these colors before, and I'm still gonna use them. Oh, they look so good. But I really didn't like that contrast color. So, when I was in Dallas uh, last weekend, Diane, who is Suburban Stitcher, she knew I was looking for an accent color, and just happened to have this one, which is the same dyer, in her stash. So now I have a beautiful medium gray to go along with my other two colors, which I think is going to look great. It is a slightly different base. This one is a merino linen, which I've never used before, but I don't think it's gonna be 
so different that it won't work. So fingers crossed on that. So I'm trying to get prepared. <laughs> so I've got a few tools here. I wanna go ahead and get all my yarn wound up. So I've got my Swift, my winder's technically over there. I also pulled out my largest size float tote because this is five skeins. And hot tip for you if you're a float tote user, I have made like enough of these to just kind of get me by. Like I don't have the exact number I need for every single float tote shell that I have. I just move them around. So I'm not using all of my float totes right now. So I grabbed a couple of cups and now I have five to fit into this one. But here's the thing. <laughs> I haven't even looked at the pattern yet. I mean, I don't have the actual pattern, but Steven does provide kind of like a five pager sheet. So I just downloaded on my Nick Companion. So let's take a look at this. So far, page one is just a photo and page two just explains when the clues are dropping, which is every Thursday starting Thursday, October 6th, and what kind of yarn you need. So I already have those things, so moving on. Third page is how to choose your colors, which luckily a lot of that got taken out of the equation for me since I bought a kit. So on the last page, no, second to last page, that gives us a lot of good information like what needle size, it says a size four, I'm gonna use that. It says we need 10 stitch markers, a cable needle, and where am I? A tapestry needle, so that's super easy. I will get all of that pulled out soon. There is a gauge and a garter stitch swatch that you can do to see how your colors interact. While I have done that in the past when I'm testing out my colors, I don't really think it's necessary this year because I already like the colors that I have. They came together in a kit and I know they're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna do something that I never recommend for people to do and that is skip my swatch. A gentle breeze, the, night's got a fever. the last page has a bunch of links to kits and other things that I've already seen. I still need to catch up on some of the fun videos that Steven's done. So I think I'm gonna pull up one of those videos on YouTube now while I get started on winding my yarn. all set up and ready to go today. I just put my needles together. I have a big thing of stitch markers ready. Most importantly though, I woke up starving so I got a breakfast sandwich <laughs> and I have my coffee. And the best thing is that there's a new episode of the Kardashians to watch. It looks like they drop at like 12 a.m. on Thursday morning so I think I'm gonna have to do the perfect pairing of the Kardashians and the West Knits Mystery Knit Along. Okay, so I haven't looked at anything yet this morning. It's almost 8 a.m. And just in case you're, you're not familiar, I wanna show you how this works. Um, also, just from here on out, you're gonna see everything from the MCAL. I'm not going to say any more spoiler alerts because at this point, if you have avoided seeing the shawl, you should just stop watching this video right now if you still want to keep it a surprise. But I'm guessing that you've either already knit it or you've already seen it and so you're not worried too much about spoilers. <laughs> Toaster! <laughs> so I'm going to go into my Ravelry 
account and I'm gonna hit that little update button. And that's going to give me the latest clue, which is clue number one. Uh-oh, sorry. Clue number one. So now when I go into my Knit Companion and I click on this, I have two PDFs, so I'm going to download the newest one. It was getting so dark over there, so I decided to come right directly into the sun, um, but I am ready to dive into this first clip. So let's see what is in here. First two pages so far, nothing new, cover photo, and then there's a bunch of explanations on like gauge, needle size, and a key of abbreviations um, that we already knew. So let's dive into the first page of the pattern. There's only two pattern pages in clue one. Do explain how you make me feel inside. Okay, I don't like to go too far into it, so I'm not even gonna look at the second pattern page of clue one. All I know right now is that we are doing an I-cord cast on, which, okay, we're casting out a lot of stitches. So that's interesting because a lot of times shawls will start with a very few amount of stitches at the top, and it's an I-cord cast on. Unfortunately, I don't have a double-pointed needle in a size four. Double-pointed needles are my preference for I-cords because you can just slip them back and forth. Um, it's like slide the stitches all the way across the needle easily, but that's okay. I will just slide them from needle tip to needle tip. And then this first section is called chevrons. So I think I'm just gonna get started casting on. It says use main color, but I don't know which one is gonna be my main color. So I think I may just pick my favorite or I may go ahead and watch the Stephen West video. He puts out a video tutorial with each clue and just kind of see if he has any tips for picking which one is the main color. But yeah, I don't know what chevrons mean. It's kind of giving me like slip extravaganza into slip extravaganza vibes, which was like not my favorite shawl. But if we're starting with this and it's only 125-ish stitches, I think I can handle it. So get your main color and contrast color. It doesn't really matter which one is which, but I would recommend there's gonna be something really detailed that we wanna see what's going on with the contrast color. So I would recommend taking your lightest color as the contrast color and your darker color as the main color. Okay, perfect. So that answers my question. So I'm gonna use my darkest color as my main color, and this is my favorite, so that's perfect. And save my lightest color for whatever he's talking about that's gonna be detailed. My guess, because he's already given us spoilers about there being cables in it with the cable needle requirement, so my guess is that there's gonna be some cables in that lighter color. We need 10 stitch markers this week. I managed to finish the I-cord cast on during my pre-work period time. Now it's lunchtime and I've changed because it got really warm today. I wanted to share with you a little tip when you're doing an I-cord cast on. Um, it can be kind of hard to keep up with like how many rows you've done. So I like to take a light bulb stitch marker because it opens and closes. Oh my gosh. Well, this just doesn't want to show you. There we go, a light bulb stitch marker, and I like to put it every 20 rows. So that way, as I'm going along, I can just go, okay, 20, 40, 60, 80, and not have to count from the beginning every single row. So this next part is sounding very wild. I'm going to definitely be using the video. And I would also just recommend, if even if you know how to do things like I know how to do an I-cord cast on. It still helps to watch the video because sometimes Steven drops even more information in the video than is in the pattern or it's just in like a set in a different way that makes more sense to my brain. So I would always recommend doing that, watching that video if you're doing an MCAL now or in the future. Um, so 
this next part sounds wild because it's like you skip part of the cast on um, part of the like I chord row so I'm guessing we're gonna get some cool little loop-de-loops anyway I'm not gonna come back in every single row of this pattern but I think every single like new moment or section hey toaster is what I want to be sharing with you just this whole experience overall so you may see me more later today or on another day but I will pop in the next time there is something worth updating so how do I explain <laughs> the last couple days because when I was reading the directions on day one, well, let me just back up. I was so excited to cast on and get started and everything, and I was having fun. And then I got to like the first set of directions and went to like the repeat, and I just got angry. <laughs> I saw what we had to do, all these cast ons and bind offs, and I just thought, are you kidding me? Really, we have to do this? And then I saw the words repeat and 11, and I was just like, I can't do it. <laughs> Not today at least. And you know what? Sometimes when I feel that way about my knitting, I know it's just like a sign for me to maybe take a break that I'm not enjoying the project right then. And I also have some other deadlines on my mind. So I decided to take a break and finish the collar of one of my sweaters. That was really important. And get the sleeves and body assembled for another one and now I'm ready to come back to it today. So let me show you what I got here. Um, and I have a much better attitude about it today and I'm actually feeling excited. And I watched Steven's video for this section and it just kind of gave me the energy that I needed. He also said it'll get easier as you go and I'm finding that true already for like, I think I've done like, I don't even know. I think I'm still in the first like technical repeat but it's the same techniques over and over again. So check this out. I am really liking my two pink colors. Look at these crazy little loops. There's the original I chord and then these like bind off cast on situations. You can see I just did some cast ons. I think I'm gonna be so grateful for the rest of the eternity for projects where I only have to cast on and bind off one time. <laughs> but yeah, all these little crazy loopsies and then you can see that we are developing a chevron. So I think I said on day one that maybe these chevrons are gonna be like slip extravaganza. They're definitely not. You can see that there's like texture, garter in one and stock in it in the other. I think that continues, I'll have to see as I get into the repeats. And then I have one final guess before I get off to knit this morning because in about, an hour and a half we're having our love and citrus membership weekly meet up for this make along and i want to make sure i get a little more done um before i see everybody um but he said in the video we're gonna do something fun with these later so i'm very curious if we're going to like twist them i mean it's twists and turns um like chain them or come and pick up here but my guess right now is that this is the top portion of the shawl and that things will build off of it but who knows so i am gonna get to uh knitting here this morning and hopefully get so much done because now it's the weekend and i have a ton of time to knit It's Monday of week one, which means I have about two and a half days until the next clue comes out. And I have good news and bad news. So let's start with the good part. So the first good news, I've got multiple pieces, is that this is starting to get more easy and memorizable. I am pretty much just having to look at the pattern to start off the road, just make sure I'm doing things correctly. And then after that, I'm like, cruising and it's feeling so much more comfortable and I'm getting quicker at it. So that's the good news. And it's looking so cool. I'm really pleased with my colors. 
The other good news is that I've created a plan that I feel like is very doable and reasonable and I've executed it for the last two days and I have three more to go. And I've just done that really simply by putting a tracker into my phone. This is the Notes app on iPhone. I just have two repeats to do per day and then I just check them off. And it's not exactly correct here on the very last day. I think I need to do like another half repeat, but I'll get that figured out then. This just really helps me kind of stay on track. Now let's go to some of like the not so good news. It's not necessarily bad news. I'll call this one just news. <laughs> so it takes me about two hours in, to do a repeat. Um, and a repeat is eight rows and they're getting bigger, but only by about 10 stitches. So two-ish hours is pretty accurate for the entire section of the shawl. So that means every day I'm trying to do two repeats, so four hours of knitting. That's a lot of knitting. And I think what I'm gonna to try to do throughout the shawl is kind of do a time estimation at the end of each clue, just in case you're like thinking about knitting this next year. Of course, every year is completely different, but I think just having an estimation can kind of help you know if this is something that you will want to commit to doing every single week and trying to keep up with the clue or just doing it at your own pace. Nothing wrong with either one of those options. Okay, now for the actual bad <laughs> news. It's fixable, but it's still kind of bad. So now that I'm like so, super confident and working on things pretty easily, I decided to stop and kind of check out my stitch count. I usually don't count my stitch count, you know, super frequently on shawls because as long as everything is lining up, it's probably fine, um, but I really should have checked things earlier because I just found out, oh, hold on, air conditioning. Okay, I just realized that I am off in pretty much every stitch repeat section. So see all of these little light bulb stitch markers? That's everywhere that I am missing a stitch. I am missing one stitch for every single one of those markers. So basically here in this chevron pattern, there are supposed to be the same number of stitches on this side that there are on this side. And I only have that <laughs> in this one section here. In the rest of the sections, I'm missing either two or two or one stitch on the left hand side. What this tells me is that I have been consistently forgetting to increase on one side of the pattern. I don't think I'm doing that anymore now that I'm comfortable with the pattern. I think this error happened much earlier on, but I need to figure out how I'm going to fix this. So the first step was figuring out how many stitches I should have, which right now is 13 stitches on either side of that center, and then figuring out where I didn't have 13 stitches on either side, and I just decided putting those light bulb stitch markers in was gonna be the best um, visual for me. One light bulb stitch marker for each stitch that I was missing, and I put those markers like where I was missing the stitches. The next thing was to figure out how I'm going to fix it. And I will first say that whenever you're fixing a stitch count, you wanna make sure you're putting stitches back in the right place. So I can't just put stitches anywhere in this section, because if I put them over here, then I'm just adding more stitches to a side that already has the correct number. They must go here, anywhere between the center stitch and this marker is fine. The other thing to think about is you don't want to correct things too quickly. So even though you would think that, let's just fix it all in one row, that can actually kind of mess up your pattern more than just continuing with the incorrect stitch count because it's not a gradual change like the pattern is. So my plan is to slowly fix these, what, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm missing five stitches, that's not terrible. So I'm gonna slowly fix these five stitches over the next two repeats, which is a total of 16 rows. That should be gradual enough for it not to affect the shape of the shawl. And then the final thing is to figure out, like literally knitting wise, how am I going to fix these? So there's two ways to change your stitch count. Um, you can either increase or decrease. And in order, and what I need to do is increase, right? I need to add stitches back in. Now I can either do an extra increase or I can not do a decrease, like just eliminate a decrease. So that was the first 
first option I explored was um, these right here. Oh, right there. Come on. These are center double decreases, which means you are decreasing two stitches at once. So I thought, oh, you know what? Instead of making them double decreases, I will make them single decreases. I can still create the same look with a single decrease. However, that's not really going to help me because the decrease doesn't come from the side that I need to add the stitch. I hope this is making sense. Anyway, basically I have concluded that I need to instead do extra increases in the areas where I need new stitches. So thinking about where this would be the least noticeable, I think is gonna be in these garter sections, um, probably on the wrong side, or there is a row, actually the one that I like just did, I just wasn't thinking about it yet. Um, the first row when I change the color, I think that will also be pretty subtle. So that's my plan. Over the next two repeats, which is 16 total rows, I'm going to here and there add back in these five stitches in the places where they're needed. Every time I fix one, every time I add a stitch back in, I am just going to take a marker off. And that's gonna be my visual that I have replaced that stitch and it is taken care of. So that's the bad news, but not so bad news because I'm definitely going to fix it. So um, I think that this is a good plan, that I feel confident that I will get it done in the next couple of days, and I'll be back with you to see if that comes true. It is the last day of Clue One, and today is going to be a challenge. Yesterday, I didn't get to start on my two repeats of the day until 8 p.m., which, as you may have guessed, meant I didn't get them finished. I stayed up as late as I could, and this is how everything is looking so far. About the same as before, just a little bit longer. I stayed up till about midnight, which is way, way past my bedtime, and I have three rows left to complete yesterday's goal of two repeats. So this is what the phone checklist is looking like. I have been doing a really good job, I think, all of the other days, so I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I realized that I have a bit of an error right here because really this should say this because technically I have three almost full repeats to do today. I think I need to do like another half repeat, but I'll get that figured out then. I'll get that figured out then. Because you repeat the thing 11 times and then you go back and you repeat like seven of the eight rows and then do a bind off, which is still like eight rows. So really I have three full repeats to do today. So this is my plan. <laughs> I am going to finish up yesterday's this uh, rows. I have three rows to go this morning before I start work. For the rest of the day, I'm going to work on my repeats in hopefully like two hour chunks. I think the repeats are starting to take a little more than two hours, but maybe if I really focus, maybe I'll time myself, I can kind of get that back down to a two-ish hour time mark. So where am I gonna get these two hours chunks from? One will be during lunch today. One will hopefully be um, before dinner and then another one after dinner so that I don't stay up quite as late as I did last night. I have fixed all of my errors, but then I kept making new ones. So I am just basically keeping a little stitch marker with me and making sure to count. Um, I think what I'm gonna do from here on out, I mean, we're almost at the end. I've got this memorized now. I no longer need my pattern, which is super great, is every time I do the first row of a repeat, which is in this lighter contrast color, I'm gonna count my stitches in the chevrons because for some reason I seem to keep forgetting in the same spot to do an increase at some point in time and then I need to add it back in, which is no real problem, but I'd like to have the correct number when I bind off just in case for the next clue, which drops tomorrow, we need to pick up a certain number of stitches. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started on today's challenge and I'll be checking in with you a lot. Lunchtime knitting is all done. I did one repeat, which was repeat number 10. So I can check that off of my list for today. I still got two more repeats to do and it is, um, well, I thought I would be further along <laughs> than I am now. I've just started on the next row of my second to last repeat, 
but I need to head out and go to my Pilates class. And when I get back, it is gonna be all about using all the rest of my time this evening to get this thing finished. If you're wondering why are you so worried about getting Clue One done in time, couldn't you just do a little bit tomorrow morning? Sure, I definitely could. But what I know about myself and what I know about these clues is that it's so important for me to start off with the first clue like done and wrapped because every day that I'm like a little bit behind, it just makes it that much harder for me to catch up. And mentally it's just like cleaner, I don't know, I guess to finish clue one and to really like push through and find ways to sneak in all the knitting that I can rather than just keep pushing it over to the next day. I guess you could say this is also an exercise in discipline for me that I'm trying to make sure I'm working even though it's not work, even though it kind of is work because <laughs> I'm making a video. Um, but it's important for me to me meet that goal. This will be the first time that I finish clue one. Anyway, too much explanation. I'm gonna go to Pilates and I'll be back. I'm back and showered and ready to get going on this tonight. It is 7.06 p.m. and I have two repeats left to go. So I know you just saw this, but for me it was a couple hours ago, so just reminding myself <laughs> how much I have to go tonight. And I'm putting myself in much the same predicament that I was in yesterday, except that it's an hour earlier today and because I was able to get my two repeats done, well, almost, I think I, that's not true, is it? I woke up with three rows left to do this morning, but no matter. I knew, I, I know now that I can get it done in that time. Even if I have to stay up until midnight again, it's okay, I can sleep until seven. That's still a decent amount of sleep. <laughs> um, I know I can get it done and I'm so determined to get this clue one done. So enough chit chat about it. I am gonna grab this, go into the living room where Kent is starting to cook and we are gonna do some knitting. And I'm two and a half rows in to the second of three repeats I need to do. <laughs> it is 9.39 and I've just finished the second of three repeats. So I get to check this off. And I think that last one took me about two and a half hours. So hopefully it's the same for the very last repeat so I can go to bed just after midnight. It's uh, <clears throat> almost 2 a.m. So I'm gonna go to bed. Good morning. We are back and ready to go for clue two. I woke up so excited this morning. I've already got everything prepared. I've got 
a cup of coffee, which I can't wait to take a sip of, my favorite breakfast, which is, well, this is my like winter favorite breakfast, steel cut oats with almond butter, and then I put um, some dark chocolate chips in there, mix it up, that's why it is that color, bananas, cinnamon, I cannot wait to get into that. But first, we have some unfinished business with Clue One that I didn't get to wrap up last night because it was literally so late. <laughs> I am somebody who normally goes to bed around 10, 11 p.m. And 2 a.m., yeah, my brain's not functioning all the way at that time. So I think the last thing that I said was so I can go to bed just after midnight. Let me explain to you why that didn't happen. <laughs> so, also you get to see this in the daylight. Um, here it is. It's huge. It's so fun to have like a fully bound off piece for a clue though. That's like very satisfying, I think, not leaving it on the needles. But... My final guess here for this clue is that we were on the top when we cast on and it's going to be like this and then we're going to somehow like pick up and keep working on it this week. That's my guess. Who knows? If it says make another one of these, I might cry. <laughs> it was so much binding off and binding on and I haven't completed completed it yet. Those of you who have made it have seen that or noticed that, um, but I will do that with you in just a second. So why didn't I actually finish around midnight like I was planning? So I did finish working all of the repeats, here's the last one, around I think like 12, 15, 12, 30. But then I needed to do the I-cord bind off and I definitely underestimated how long that was gonna take. We had almost 300 stitches, I think it's like 274 or something or 72. And it took me two hours or an hour and a half to bind off. Whew. But I'm really glad that I did finish it yesterday because if I had woken up this morning going, I'll just finish up clue one really quickly and it took two hours, I would have been disappointed. Um, so I'm glad that I went ahead and did that. Okay, we're gonna wrap up clue one with a little time estimate. I thought that this would be interesting because I like to kind of see how much time it takes me for a couple reasons. Um, one, I was using like the repeat time to see how much time I needed to plan day to day to get things done. It didn't always work out perfectly, but it was helpful to be like more realistic and kind of push myself to find times to knit. It's also just amazing to see how much you did do over the course of a week in this clue absolutely blew my mind when I finished and totaled everything up. This is not a perfect um, measure of how long it took because I wasn't doing like a timer or anything. This is just a good estimate. I think I, I did time like a couple of the repeats. So for this clue, there was a cast on, which took me about one hour because it was an I-cord cast on. There were then 14 repeats. I'm estimating that the first eight repeats took about two hours. So that's 16, we're up to 17 hours. And then I'm guessing that this last six took me more like two and a half hours, which is an additional 15 hours. So now we're up to 33, you know, 32 or something like that. I have the total down here. And then the bind off took me two hours for a grand total of 34 hours. That is a full-time job <laughs> over the last week. Where did that hair just come from? That this piece of knitting took. Usually clue one is the longest and I'm hoping that's true this year because that is a heck of a lot of knitting. I don't know how I would have gotten it done had I not had a job where the nature of my job is to knit <laughs> and I can like structure my day to give myself more time to do things, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm really excited about it because I've basically gotten all my work done so that I just have today to just work on the clue with you. Hi, <laughs> before we finish up clue one, we have to put in these loops. I thought we would do it together because I haven't done a single one yet and I am so, so excited. So all of these little things that we made are going to be these cool braided looking loops starting, oops, let's not do it the wrong way, starting down here at the cast on edge. So I think you just take it and twist it and then you grab the next one and pull it through and for the all the rest of them, you're just pulling through. I have resisted doing this the entire time because I thought it would be more fun to wait till the end so that we could do it together. Oh, that is gonna be 
So, so cool. Okay, let's get this done because I'm excited to move on to the next clue. Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine and got time to do everything you said you would. Frames of the past and the memory of you just come running by. Pictures of sunny days with your smile and the I hope that looked fast on camera because in reality, it took about 10 minutes. So let's add 10 more minutes to our clue one. Can't look. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it so cool? Yes, that was clue two. This is clue one. Oh, clue one. All done. Why isn't clue two done yet? Doing these cool braids just totally transforms it and also makes it a bit smaller and a bit of a different shape. So I'm still guessing that this is the top, but you never, never know. And I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I need to look back at the video to figure out if I'm supposed to finish those off or whatever. But it is finally time to get in to clue number two. So I just pulled up the email and I didn't realize that if I read the first paragraph, I would actually get some spoilers. So I've already been a little spoiled for this week, which I don't know how, quite how I feel about it yet. The good thing is I do want to kind of know what's coming or at least how much knitting because I don't want to be in the same situation that I was in this week where I'm finishing at like midnight and 2 a.m. That's just too late for me. So uh, yeah, I already know that there's going to be four new sections. What? Um, so we already did some some twisting. So my guess is this week we're gonna do some turning and maybe some more twisting. Um, but it says we're using um, short rows, twisted stitches, and cables. You will need all three colors and a cable needle, which means I'm gonna be bringing in my gray. So this is gonna be really, really fun. So let me actually get it downloaded and let's see what's happening here in our first new section. Unlike my friends, you are nothing like that. Okay, this is starting off well because I changed my Ravelry password last week and I actually remembered it. To be cool, even wear that shirt you I'm already noticing that I'm definitely going to need a cable needle because they are big cables. It looks like cable eight front and cable eight back. So exchanging four stitches over four stitches. This is exciting because I don't think I've ever done a West Knits MCAL that has included cables. Okay, fun. It looks like we're going to start by picking up where we bound off and working some garter rows. So I'm definitely going to pull out the video so that I can follow along. I'm definitely supposed to loop through this like last little bit here. I think just like that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that looks a lot better. And we're going to pick up our stitches and get our new section started. Section two begins on the left edge of section one. This is the cast on edge of section one. This is the bind off edge. So we're gonna start right here Yay. at the left bind off corner. You I'm gonna slide them onto my needle. So I've got three stitches and I'm gonna call this my left needle. So you want it to look just like that. Get three at that bound off corner. Mid Okay, I think I got what we're doing. We're picking up along the side edge here to start our first section of clue two. I've just turned to the second page and I'm walking into the bedroom because I need to get my stitch markers for it, but I'm getting excited because I see words like short rows, I see garter stitch, I see accent color, I see twisted rib which is gonna be interesting. Um, but I'm just kind of grateful. I think this clue is going to be a tad bit um, nicer to knit. Not as many cast-ons and binds-offs. I'm pretty over that. And we are about to have a pretty rainy day, I think. So I'm just gonna be chilling and knitting and drinking my coffee. Checking back in, it's been a few hours. I've done some work, I've eaten lunch, and I did knit on this for quite a bit this morning. And I think I'm finished with my cute little short rows and something new is coming. I'm still in the same section, um, the first section of this clue, but I see 
accent color so I am looking at it uh, and about to pull up the video resulting in 16 garter ridges so keep on <clears throat> something is not right because I don't have 16 garter ridges I have 15 so I need to figure that out first okay so I need to the last eight right yes turned okay so did I do this every five five, five. oh okay not a problem, I just forgot to do the very last teensy, tiny, little short row. So once I do that, I will be good to go. Guess what? What? I get to add in my next color! Yay! Yay! You should still have 79 stitches at the end of this row. Oh, better check. Stitch count done. Better check on that stitch count since we had so many problems in the first row. At the end of row one, right side, Slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. Oh no! Back and knit four. No! Three and four. Purl one through the back loop. Uh. One to last three stitches. Okay, so I knew twisted ribbing was coming up, but I didn't think about this being flat. <laughs> and so on the wrong side, of course, we're gonna have to purl through the back loop, which is not really that big of a deal, but it is kind of a pain. Um, in last year, I guess, I did a long summer cardigan where I had tons of flat twisted ribbing and it's bringing back the memories. I feel like I have a pretty good idea of these next two sections, which is great because today did not turn out to be the knit all day type of day that I thought it was gonna be, but that's all right. So I know that we're gonna be repeating these two gartery short row and twisted stitch sections, I believe. I just basically finished the first repeat, or no, I haven't even finished the first repeat yet, uh, but it looks like we're gonna do it a few times and get several wedges on the left side and then we're gonna go over and do the same thing on the right. So that's the first two sections of, I think, four for this clue, and that is going to take a while. Now, while I'm really not wanting to like get ahead of the clue, normally I wouldn't read ahead, um, but I'm going to for two reasons. One, it is Rhinebeck right, uh, or it's about to be Rhinebeck right now <laughs> in this time. So there's so much stuff behind me, which by the way, you should go watch our Rhinebeck vlogs, um, but, I think, or I need to be on Instagram <laughs> this weekend so I can be posting stuff and talking to people, and I think I might get spoiled if I do that. So I want to go ahead and just spoil it myself, or see ahead myself, instead of like randomly like seeing a picture on Instagram. The second reason is that I want to plan ahead well, because the first clue, it overwhelms me with how much that there was to knit and I'd rather have a good sense of everything that's going to be in this clue on day one so I can make a good plan. Um, tonight I'm also going to, when I start the next repeat of this with the short row wedges and the twisted rib, there we go. I'm going to time myself and see how long it takes and that will give me a really good look into how long these two wedge sections are going to take. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page and see what is coming up. <laughs> okay, so I've made it to the part where both the little like wings are done on the outside. And like I thought, it looks like we're going to, after we have all this on the outside, we're gonna go pick up along the bottom here but like all the way across, which will be fun. And this section says cables. So that reminds me, I need to pack my cable needle. I mean, there is like 0% chance that I will get through all of that over this weekend, but you know, just in case I wanna have my cable needle ready. I really don't wanna to go to the next page because there's a photo, but I really want to know what's in store and I really need to know what's in store because I think we're going to have quite a lot of stitches in the cable section. But the thing is, is, if this next section is like 10 rows, then that might not take a long time. Or if one of the sections is a bind off, then I need to know that. But if the, one of the sections is like knit 200 stitches for like 40 rows, that's gonna take me a while and I need to know that. So let's go on. Mm. Okay, 
okay, actually, I am wrong. Wait. Okay, I think I'm wrong. I'm not going to watch the video yet, but now I know that there are 34 rows in each of two cable sections, which instead of, I think, going all the way across the bottom, it's just going to be on like this wedge and then this wedge. <laughs> it's not here yet. Um, so that's good to know. That's still a lot of knitting, but it's not quite the same as picking up across the entire shawl and doing all of that knitting. So yeah, I still need to like hustle with four sections and seven days and one day almost gone already. Where does that leave me? Where's my phone? It looks like I need to do like a full section every two days, except that doesn't quite work out right because that would mean I had eight days. So I need to do like about 60% of a section every day. I'll figure that out. So maybe I will try to make it my goal to finish these wings by maybe the time we get back. That would be ideal, which is gonna be on Sunday. So I'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to finish the wings, and that will give me three days to do the cable sections. So I don't know. That's just what's gonna be in my head for now. I'll know more tonight when I see how long it takes me to do one of these wedges. All right, that's enough. I'm hungry and I wanna go do some knitting. Oh man, we are back from Rhinebeck and it has been a busy day of getting unpacked, trying to catch up on some rust, doing lots of work with our vlogs and everything, but I have been able to squeeze in some knitting. But it is Monday and the new clue for Clue 3 comes out on Thursday, which means I only have three, well, less than three days. It is a uh, five o'clock, <laughs> um, so like oh, two days basically well, two and a half days left to finish clue two. And I have just finished the first of four sections. So not off to a great start, but I have a plan. So I uh, looks so cool. So this is the first wing and I finally did sit down with a stopwatch and work a full repeat. So I know that when I do this side, which is the mirror image of the other side, it should take me, I think like seven hours. So it takes me an hour and a half to do this much. There's four like this and then one more like that. So I think I did the math and that is seven hours. But ideally I would have liked to finish that today, but it being five o'clock, I don't think that's gonna happen. I still have other work to do and uh, it's all right. But, as long as I can get as much of this side done today, maybe I do need to start my nights of staying up late. I really need sleep. It's so silly to be like not sleeping well because of knitting, but like I really wanna stay caught up on everything. So I don't know, TBD, but ideally I would finish this whole side today. And then I have two those two cabled sections um, that I haven't started yet. So if I could finish the right wing, or left wing, whichever one this is today, that would give me a full day for each of the cable sections, especially because I don't know how long they're gonna take. So it could be like, I'm looking at three seven hour knitting days, which is a lot. So I'm definitely gonna be timing myself once I start that first cable section to give me a really good chance of finishing the second one. I don't know if there's that much else to say right now, except I just need to, to get to knitting and knit as much as possible today, and maybe I'll have another update for you tomorrow. Well, I'm back sooner than I thought because I have news. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm so grumpy about this, it's just knitting. So I just picked up my stitches to start the other side. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to rock and roll. I did this section already, some knitting, I got this. And then I watch the video and it says, break your yarn, go to the other side and purl. I'm like, okay, we can purl for garter stitch, but wait a second. If we purl this row, does that mean we're purling all of the garter? And I look at the directions and everything that was knit on this side is gonna be purl garter. 
and I don't hate purling as much as I know a lot of people do, but purling is definitely slower for me than knitting. And so all those calculations that I did on the one side of how long this is going to take may in fact be slower. And for a second I was like, you know what, maybe I can actually like knit and reverse engineer this. And then I was like, no, 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 Natalie. There is a reason that Steven must have done it this way and must have not been possible to do the other way. So I am just going to trust. And I guess another thing is that I can use this as an experiment to see if purling really is slower for me than knitting or if it's just in my head. So I'm a, I'm a little grumpy, but now I think I'm going to look at it as an experiment and um, brush up on my purling. Tonight is pretty significant because it is the second to last night I have to work on this clue to. And uh, yeah, I have the calculations for this section. I'm standing up because I'm about to run back in and watch Bachelor in Paradise. So I have one more section left to go on this pearl section that I was whining about. This is taking me so much less time than this one did, which was like three days. I'm getting this one done super fast and I just have one repeat left to go. So my question was, is purling slower than knitting? And I will say, at first, I was slower. I did not time myself on the first or second time that I did this because I, you know, was getting the instructions and reading and that always slows you down. I did time myself on the third time that I did this and it took me an hour and 50 minutes compared to an hour and 30 minutes on the knitting side. But then just now I did my fourth repeat in an hour and 37 minutes, which I would have to say is probably just as fast as the knitting side. So that's at least for me, maybe purling is slightly slower than knitting, but not enough to make a significant difference. Okay, the one thing that I have been whining about on this section is the fact that, wait, that's not the right side. The fact that I have to carry and twist my yarns here on this I-cord side. Is it better than having to weave in ends? Yes, but I am so tired of it. I think the next section has just one color and I'm very much looking forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna go watch The Bachelor and hopefully tonight we will be starting on the next section. It's the last day of Clue 2 and just like before we have ourselves in a bit of a predicament. <laughs> I had the best of intentions but because of Rhinebeck weekend it just didn't go to plan. I also planned to uh, change things up from last night. I thought you know what instead of staying up late I think I will wake up early. I'm probably going to stay up two hours late so why don't I wake up two hours early. I always do better in the morning. Well, I don't know what happened, but I don't know. Maybe I slept through my alarm, but I ended up waking up. I was planning to wake up at 5 a.m. and I ended up waking up like three minutes before my normal alarm would go off at seven. And I was like, hmm, the sun is rising. That doesn't seem like 5 a.m. But I did get up very quickly. And I, I don't know, you can probably hear in the background some noises, I've got coffee going, I'm making my breakfast. I'm ready to get started. So I'm gonna just get as much done as I can today. I am going to be doing two sections that are mirrored. So I'm gonna be meticulously um, timing that first section so that I can see if I even have a chance. There are 32, no wait, 34 rows and an I-cord bind off in each section. It begins by picking up and it has cables in it. So. Oh, here comes the sun and toaster. Hey, buddy. So I am just going to get started watching the video with that this morning. Um, Kent and I have doctor's appointments today for the first time 
since pre-COVID. So I don't really have work planned for today because I wanted to make sure I had some time to rest after Rhinebeck and all of that. But there he is. So basically, I'm just going to be carrying my knitting with me everywhere we go. <sighs> All right, breakfast is made and it's time to get started on these next two sections. So these are technically sections five and six, but they're the third and fourth section of this clue. So. <laughs> you know, buddy? Okay. So this clue ends with the stitches. Not sorry, not this clue. The last two sections ended with live stitches on either side. So I've got those with little just end stoppers on the ends of my needles and I've transferred my needles to yet another 24 inch circular cord. This is already massive. If we keep making this bigger and expand, it is going to just be a huge shawl and I take back everything I said about clue one having the most knitting in it. I think all of the clues are gonna have the most knitting in them. I mean, this is just so big. So what's fun about this section is that we're going back to the contrast color, which mine is a nice light pink, so I'm pretty excited to put that back in. I've got the video pulled up and ready to show me how to pick up stitches. No fear, no doubt. I know a place that sneak away. Leave the pain, I'll stay with you. This pickup row is a bear and there are a ton of stitches. If I had any hope of thinking that this wasn't going to take that long, I think I am incorrect. But I'm going to go ahead and start my timer now that I've stopped watching the video because I just really want an accurate timing of how long it's going to take to do this section if there is any hope of me finishing it today. It's finally time. Row five is a cable row, so get that cable needle handy. We're going to begin row five by knitting the first three stitches. Knit three, purl front back. I just dropped my cable needle in my oatmeal. You know, doubt. I know a place that sneak away. Leave the pain, I'll stay with you. Okay, it is 6.45 p.m. the night before Clue 3 comes out, and I don't think I'm going to finish. I am really enjoying this, though. I am loving how these cables are coming out. How pretty is this? I think I still have about 12 rows to do in this section, plus the bind off there, and then repeat the whole thing on this side. I've been doing a pretty good job, I think, keeping track of how long it's taking me taking me today. And right now, so far, not even done, I'm at over four hours. Toaster, what are you doing? It's like <laughs> licking the couch. But I got a message on Instagram today that I think may completely change the way I do the rest of this shawl. <laughs> I woke up this morning with a fresh perspective. So today I'm gonna to be doing something that I have never done in all of the years I've been doing this mystery shawl knit along. 